Uh, I think you're probably right that there's a lot of exaggeration in that whole uh, norm is to appear um, like appear in PC. But correct, you have to appear like if you're especially in that position, you have to appear as though you work hard for the artist portion man show business. Um, so but I think there is still some truth underneath that that um, the of course they have more autonomy, they have more work satisfaction. Uh, it, I mean not uh, saying poor CEOs, but I, but and, and they're obviously politically trying to present themselves as you said, to justify their salaries. But uh, but the hard data shows that, for example, the 1920s era of high inequality, um, most of the uh, of the income that came to the wealthy, one, the wealthiest one percent, was in the form was in the form of you know, return on investments. Um, but today, uh, it's wages, um, and that shocks us because we hear about these stock option deals and all that stuff that make the papers. But still, if you look at the top one percent, um, the share of their income that's from some capital gains and from dividends and other interest payments and so forth has gone down steadily, and the share from wages has gone up. So there's something going on there, um, uh, and you know, I'm sure they're exaggerating. Um, can you speak to what I'm seeing as a materialization of communication? It seems that with the constant text and the constant that, that we simply wouldn't have communicated that the marketing is working. It seems to be coming electronically and filling the air. And, and I'm not just being an old filling on this. I suspect that what's happening is a whole lot of things that don't need to be said to be said that has to affect the economy. Maybe I shouldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, maybe I don't have Twitter. Do you see so, a social effect coming from? I think the end of, there's the end of solitude, the end of, of uh, quietude, and I think there are consequences for creativity, for innovation, for um, sanity, for a lot of things uh, that you know, we may not be aware of. But I think that's one of the jobs of the social scientists to, you know, to, to point this out. Be an you know, unfocused. You know, there are other ways. I'm one of the younger people here. Yeah, um, I'm one of those people I was raised pretty much on, you know, going outside and playing, not staying on video games and Facebook all day. I really, I don't like texting, I don't like Facebook, but I find it hard to communicate with other people in my generation because team, nobody wants to pick the phone and call anyone. So what kind of advice would you give to people our age that don't want to get into this, but really don't have a choice if you want to have a social life. <laughs> I do want to say that you know, some of the concerns of um, us old phobies might be, you know, if you go really old, people are saying the same thing about telephones um, that destroyed face-to-face -face interaction. Um, obviously about TV um, you know, and, and so forth. But there, but if you look at data from say the two terrible uh, trust study of the internet society, the number of hours that especially teenagers are on media is it keeps rising in terms of it's at the level of you can't squeeze any more hours a day. And it's actually cutting into sleep time, which is critical for cough, for brain development and so forth. Um, people have their phones by their beds, um, you know, they're getting buzzed and woken, interrupted sleep patterns. Uh, from from text messages or calls coming and so forth. So um, I don't know. It takes just an incredible amount of discipline to turn it off and put it away and say you're not available. Um, you know that's all. You know, or you can join the bomber and go to uh, Montana and build a life cabin from scratch. I don't know. You know it's, it's kind of e almost easier to do the whole nine yards of it to go four yards. Anybody have a commission to study about how much productivity and man hours are lost because of the internet? Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, fantasy football, the internet. Anybody have a commission to study to see how much money they've lost on stuff like that? Yeah, companies are very, I mean, companies are very concerned about wasted product, productive time. I think that they can't have it both ways. You can't say, um, you can't toggle over for a split second to see 
what the score is on your how you know, your fantasy football team is doing or or what someone posted on Facebook and it fit them not to do that and yet get expect them to um, respond to something at the level of night. You know, there's either one mode of work life or there's another mode of work life. So you know I think that uh, if I was a consultant to companies, which I'm not, I would say uh, if you're going to go that route, the, the, the blending route, focus on, forget about the idea of hourly wages and focus on a project-based um, productivity and goals. And you want this done by X date and let people manage their own lives and give them the time to go to the doctor with their kid in the middle of the day or whatever if they can telecommute. I don't, I, it's amazing how little we have adapted to telecommute. Um, people still expect it to show up to be there in the office and have FaceTime given the technologies that how, how often that, you know, even that lectures like this weren't given via, um, I mean, I'm local, but you know, you're going to have some folks coming from pretty far away. Um, and there's a huge debate in the literature about the value of the face-to-face -face interaction versus the mediated communication because it can play out over the next decade. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned David Winston uh, early on, mid 20th century sociologist, who was able to capture the post war spirit, um, the drift of the country, and he called other directed, which followed inner directed, which followed tradition directed personality types. So, how would you explain in a category like that, maybe Reisman asked, this drift towards social media? Is it you know, beyond other directed? Is it well, I, try, I uh, uh, talk about a uh, move towards what I call uh, from individualism to individualism, so that you have um, the boundary between self and other, in other words, between indirected and other, uh, other directed uh, personalities, in, to use recent terms, is actually becoming a new boundary, uh, so that uh, going way back down to uh, sociologist Georg Zimmel, Argued that uh, in pre-modern society, what we used to call primitive society before that stuff, you see, um, we all lived in the same village, right? All of our, our all, all of our family was in the same village. All of our village was of the same tribe. All of our tribe was of the same religion. All of our you know was the same kingdom. So we were we were at the center. Of each, we and our people, our posse, were at the center of outwardly expand, like ripples, you know, concentric circles. But we're all the same, the people around us. Then we urbanized, moved to cities, um, and we're unique because everyone who lives in my building is not um, of the same, it's not my family, my family spread out. Um, my uh, next door neighbors has different citizenship even than I do. Um, the, they have different occupational groupings, they have different religions, they have different um, so forth. So, uh, I'm unique because I'm the only person who is you know, NYU employee, uh, lives on 29th Street, does this, you know, that um, belongs to this church or religion or whatever, and belongs to that um, bowling league and is a Giants fan, and you know, and so voila, you have the individualism, the ind notion of the individual because we're constantly in the city regaining difference. Um, and it reflects on, and, and by negotiating the difference, in those um, multiple affiliations we have, none of which necessarily overlap, makes us unique in who we are. I would argue that in a sort of one of the, pre, the, the uh, presuppositions of that is that most of our social life was embodied in ourself. Meaning, you went to your bowling league and you saw people. You went to your job or your home or your church. Um, so you could only be in one place at one time. But now, if, you're, if your biggest um, social life is online, you can be in multiple places at multiple times. You can be a member of a Muslim mosque online at the same time you're a member of, of a Catholic church or a, a Jewish temple. Um, you can be, uh, and you never actually have to confront the difference um, of being the only white Muslim in your mosque or something like that. Um, uh, and therefore, it's all online. It's all through social media groupings and so forth, which extend out forever because you can just, through 
first degree, second degree, third degree, connect to anyone in the world. Um, so I think that that whole kind of inner directed, outer directed, individual versus group has been